this is a video on z-scores and basically they're calculated by a calculator or by hand with the formula here or here however we can also use stat crunch to kind of get the z-score but when we start calculating you know um, higher data and, and probabilities we're basically using stat crunch to bypass the z-score and just calculate the probability right in stat crunch but let's look at finding a z-score and the meaning so a z-score basically is the number of standard deviations that any given value of a data point x is above or below the mean the z-score is calculated by taking your input your x value subtracting your mean and then dividing that difference by the standard deviation this is the population values and this is the sample values it's basically the same though right but just depending on what you're using this is the sample standard or excuse me this is the standard normal distribution the bell curve right now you'll notice the standard deviations start in the middle right here would be zero and it goes out one to the left two three standard deviations or up right well this is the standardized bell curve so those also represent the z-scores because z-scores are the number of standard deviations you are away from the mean and the mean is in the middle now if your mean is not zero like it is here then you don't have a standardized bell curve you have the bell curve or, or the graph for your data and it'll have like a mean of say 63 and a standard deviation of 4.2 that's not standardized one year Chris had lowest ERA of any male pitcher at a school with an ERA of 3.23 Sally had a lowest ERA of any female pitcher at the school 3.01 for the males the mean ERA was 3.725 and the standard deviation was 0.616 for the females the ERA was 4.178 and the standard deviation was 0.885 for their respective z-scores okay Oh, sorry, find their respective z-scores. The reason why we're going to find a z-score is because these are males and females, and probably one is uh, maybe softball and one's baseball. They're two different entities, right? We're not comparing them to the same exact samples, so we need to standardize them, look at their z-scores, and then we can see which is doing better relative to where they're playing. So which player had the better year? relative to their peers Chris or Sally okay so note that a lower ERA is the better pitcher you would want lower earned runs average right well we can see the answers here but let's see how we find them now this is by hand first and then in stat crunch so let's find Chris's first Chris had an ERA of 3.23 so that's going to be my X value 3.23 minus his mean for the males, the mean was 3.725, all over his standard deviation, 0.616. Okay, so that would be his z-score. And I'll put in parentheses so we don't make a mistake, but 3.23 minus 3.725, end your parentheses, and then you can click divide by 0.616. Zero point eight zero three six round up, and they just want it to one to one decimal place, so I can put negative point eight. That's his standard deviations away from the mean. That's his z score now, because we standardized it. Now we're here, just negative point eight. We're right in this area, right about there. Okay, actually more towards the, the here, right, right about there let's do hers now I'll do hers in red her z-score would be Sally had a lowest ERA of 3.01 3.01 minus their mean was 4.178 4.178 divided by their standard deviation 885 okay We'll put that in the calculator. 3.01 minus 
178, and your parentheses so that you do that calculation first. Then you divide by the 0.885. Now that z-score for her is negative 1.319, round off to 8. So they only wanted to round it off to the 10, so negative 1.3. And negative 1.3 would be negative 1.123, right in the middle, basically right there. <clears throat> well, they wanted two decimal places, I guess, huh? Right, so I should have went this far and here, and rounded the 3, 1 up to a 2, 3, 2. Okay, so anyway, that's how you do it by hand. And then this is our information. So who was the better pitcher? Knowing that an earned run average, having a lower earned run average is better. And this is, the average is the mean. So if you were average, you were right in the middle. If you're to the left of average, you're below average in a sense, I mean, of the word, but that's good for earned run average, right? So really, Sally had a better year because she had a lower z-score. Again, it's saying that she's not letting up as much runs, as many runs, compared to um, Chris's in, res in respect of to his sport. So he, she had a better year overall relative her, to her peers versus he did relative to his peers. Okay, It's not, it's not saying that she's better pitcher than he is, it's just saying relative to their peers, he didn't quite have as good of a season as someone else may have had, you know, whereas she had a pretty good season compared to the rest of the peers in her group. Now let's look at StatCrunch. We're, we're, how could I have done this in StatCrunch? So I grab StatCrunch here, I have to open it up, it's not in here, you can do the get more help area to get it. And I've already filled this out. I've filled out my X, my mean and my standard deviation because this is all given to us, right? Now we're just basically going to compute this with a calculator kind of option here. So Chris's and Sally's. You go into data and click compute expression. Okay, so now we're going to make a expression. We're going to build it. We want parentheses because we want to build this expression. We want our X value, add column, minus our mean, add column, then arrow over, divided by our standard deviation, add column. Now I labeled them. I made these labels up there, x, mean, and standard deviation, so that they would be in here when I did this work and I knew what I was talking about. So you have to write that. Then I click OK. Then it has an expression, and let's label our new column as z-score. And as I click Compute, it creates a new column here with the z-score. Now, you just click up here to change whatever you want, and that's how I labeled that. So I labeled x and put the x values in there, the data points, the means for each of them, and standard deviation, and that's how you can calculate z-score quickly, and you could do it for all of them. If you had more, this would be a lot quicker, right? And then you just round it off to the appropriate points that they want. Let's try to do one with where we only have data and we don't have these, we don't have our mean or standard deviation and we have to get it. Here's our data. It's Oreos and they're weighed in grams and there's 94 of them. So there's no way I'm going to calculate them each individually. But I can do this the same kind of way. I first need to, I first need to find my mean and standard deviation. And since this isn't all the Oreos there are in the world, I'll just use the sample stuff that they have, sample standard deviation and sample mean. So there's the mean, and then the, sa the standard deviation will be right in there. Once I select the Oreo there, I can just click Compute, because I have both mean and standard deviation in my list. All right, here's the mean and standard deviation. Now I need to keep those numbers, because I need to put them into a formula for each of the, to, ca to calculate each of these. So let's kind of keep that over here. And now go to data, compute, expression. Pull it up here. We're going to do the same kind of idea, build. Now, the Oreo weight is the x value. But let's get some parentheses first, and then add it. Then we're going to subtract I don't have it stored anywhere, so I can just type it in here, though. The 
Remember, mean, subtract the mean, sample minus the mean over the standard deviation. So we go to our mean and I type it in. I'll type in as much as I can. Then I will end the right click out of there. X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, which we have written down here as 0 0.17199317. And I click OK. This is going to be the z-score. Compute. There's the z-score of each individual Oreo cookie. Basically it's how far this Oreo cookie is away from the mean, right? So are there any that are close to zero? That's pretty close. 0 0.0006, that's pretty close. Pretty close to the to the mean, right? And the mean was 3.09. So it's pretty close to the mean. It's almost exactly. So this shows basically the data the z scores for multiple or as many as you want.